John Farrell, thank you so much for joining us on with on one on one. And um, these are just a couple of your CDs. You have, I believe, seven yes. different CDs. Yeah. Um, you've been performing all over the world, really. You've you've performed in Tennessee, though. This is not your first time in Tennessee. No, Tennessee. This is probably the eighth or ninth time that I've been to the Cookville area. Right. Why Why do you like touring? Um, Meeting people in different places is uh, is a great way to learn about our world and our country. So traveling is a great education. Let's just tell folks a little bit about you. You're a singer, songwriter, author, peace educator. Uh, you have recorded all of these CDs for children. You uh, have uh, songs, you've written songs and starred in the Great Earth Sing Along, which received a Parents' Choice Award uh, and a Dove Foundation Award. That's amazing, it's great. <laughs> well, this work for children, how long has that been going on? Uh, you... My wife and I uh, have five children, and uh, that's probably the most important accomplishment that, that I've made. Uh, and uh, our oldest daughter is now 26 years old, and when she was a baby is when I started to write songs for children and to perform in schools, so uh, well, over 25 years ago. Wow. How, what kind of message do you get? I, there's so many things, dignity and respect, and, um, but what are some of the themes that just really you find endless to find the information for? Well, when working with people in different places from different cultures, uh, it doesn't matter where you go, uh, kids are the same. They all love to laugh. They all love to sing. Uh, they're all curious. So uh, by traveling and sharing music, I believe that I've come to have a, an opportunity, a, a privilege to understand how much more alike we all are than different. Yeah. It's an important message, especially now, isn't it? Mm, I think so. I, uh, now, you, um, you have a lot of work, including a book. Uh, mm -hmm. You have several books, actually. This is a great book. I was I was um, looking through this, Dear Child. Tell me about this book. What inspired this book? Well, uh, I was visiting a school that I go to every year, or I did at the time, and one of the members of the group that uh, sponsored my visit there was a gentleman that uh, had been in education for years and years, and I saw him, and he just had big, big grin on his face, and he's always a friendly mm -hmm. man, but in this instance, he, he looked younger, happier. So I asked him, I said, Lindsay, you look great, you know, what's going on? He said, my uh, daughter just had a baby. And he took out this accordion folder <laughs> of about 24 pictures of this <laughs> homely kid. <laughs> no, I'm only kidding, of this beautiful baby. And uh, that experience, I sat in my car and on the back of an envelope wrote the uh, chorus for the song, which was, Dear Child, I Never Knew, Clouds Are So Beautiful, The Sky Was So Blue. So it started as a song? Yeah, it started just as an idea, but it was a song before mm -hmm. it was a book. Well, yeah. can you play a little bit? I Do you mind? I sure can. No, don't mind at all. <laughs> you tell me when to stop. Oh, no, just go. Dear Child, I never knew Clouds were so beautiful The sky was so blue Dear sweet child You taught me to fly I found my wings When I looked in your eyes How is this possible? How can it be? That such a small child done this to me bird songs are sweeter now each note rings clear the moon's light is brighter now all because you are here oh that's great that is just what a beautiful song thank you and, and um, the book is great, too. Great illustrations with the book. And, yeah. Um, the publisher is Boyd's Mills Press, which is a division of Highlights magazine for children. 
and they actually do their printing here in Tennessee. So Is that there, right? There's a connection. There. That's great. That, now, you don't, obviously, you don't live in Tennessee. You're from New York, right? Mm -hmm. Tell us about your home and your family. I live in upstate New York on the border of New York State and Massachusetts, in a little town called Hillsdale, less than a thousand people, one traffic light, so mm -hmm. you, it's easy to get directions coming and going. My wife is a uh, is a second grade teacher. She taught kindergarten for ten years, and we had five children in five years. We had three children, and then we had twins. So I had a, a built-in audience for my songs and stories, and uh, a chance to be with my own children and, uh, a lot. A lot of inspiration, I'm sure. There Absolutely. four stories, yeah, right? Yeah. The, the words of the dear child were inspired by uh, a conversation with a friend, but it was my own children that I was thinking about. Sure. Uh, their own words. How, um, now recently, with all the hurricane devastation in the Northeast, did, did you, were you affected by that? Well, our area was affected by it quite a lot. Um, I live about an hour and a half from the Catskill Mountains and about an hour and a half from southern Vermont. And those two areas uh, suffered a great deal of uh, devastation. A lot of homes were destroyed. A lot of families were displaced in very rural communities. And you've developed, you've worked with some friends to develop a sort of a coalition of help, right? Well, Bridges of Peace and Hope is a, an organization that uh, I started with friends about five years ago after traveling to Africa. and. Uh, we are teachers and students in schools in many different places, many different countries, trying to learn about one another through music and writing and art and cooperation. So we have a partner school in Zambia, Africa, that we have done some fundraising for to help them because it, you know, it's so different. Uh, they don't have electricity. Mm -hmm. Uh, one teacher teaches two grades, the teacher's salary is, they have to go out and find it every year. So that's part of the background for Bridges of Peace and Hope. We also want to be and are getting more involved with some local things. And when the hurricane damage occurred, a few of the schools were ones that I had visited. So I talked with the advisory board for Bridges of Peace and Hope, and we decided to ask if we could help them in any way. Can you learn about that online? Yes, you can. You That's can. great. What a wonderful thing! What a wonderful way to share your work, but also to help others at the same time. Well, it's I'm the recipient of most of the rewards <laughs> in terms of satisfaction and just learning. Yeah. You, you, we've talked about some of the awards that you won, but sometimes awards are not the things you're most proud of. Mm -hmm. What are you most proud of? That's a, a good question. Um, I think it's the uh, the opportunity to to hear your song sung by someone far away, to know that there's a connection between the work that you do. Um, September 21st is International Day of Peace. I sent out a newsletter with a song that I had written, and I heard from people in Africa the next day that they had sung the song in Eastern Europe. And uh, so I think that, I'm not sure that that's the answer to what I'm most proud of. Um, I think that uh, it's a, a chance to really make connections with people. You know. What was that song? Uh, it's called, What Can We Do to Make Peace? Oh, yeah. cool. Actually Can here at, at Uffelman, we've been writing songs this week. Oh, you have. Well, tell yes. me about your work here at Uffelman. We're in Monterey, Tennessee, yeah. Uffelman Elementary. Yeah. Well, I've known the music teacher here, Jane Fraunheiser, for many years, and Jane's a great supporter of children and music and the arts. And she uh, arranged through a uh, sponsorship from Target mm -hmm. uh, to have me come and do a songwriting residency with students here. So we've worked on three songs, which we're going to perform in a little while here. One is called, Who Needs Help? Uh, second one is, What Can We Do to Help Stop Bullying? And the third one is called, Working Together. So you can tell from those titles that all three of the songs are about people trying to solve problems peacefully. 
That's great. Mm -hmm. That's a wonderful opportunity. I know the, the kids here are very excited to have you here, and the faculty, the whole community, very excited to have you here. Uh, they always welcome me warmly, and it's uh, something I look forward to. We're, we're going to take a little break so we can see some of this performance, mm -hmm. and uh, then if it's okay, we'll come back and talk a little more. Is that okay. good? Sure, that'd be great. great. Now, if the first grade uh, songwriters could please stand up, the first graders who helped me to write this song. <clears throat> now, we only finished writing the song yesterday, so we didn't get a lot of chance to practice it. We only got to practice it a little bit, so if we make some mistakes, will you forgive us? Okay, thank you. The words of the song are over here on this side. And uh, the theme of the song is, is who needs help? And we decided that we all need help. So the first graders and I and Miss Chain are gonna sing this song for you. And uh, watch Miss Chain for direction, you guys, on which words we're gonna be singing. Who needs help? I who needs help? Who needs help? We all, do. we all need help to make it through. Who needs food? I do. Who needs food? You do. Who needs food? We all do. We all need food to make it through. What else do we need? Water. Who needs water? I do. Who needs water? Who needs water? We all, do. we all need water to make it through. What else do we need? Clothes. Who needs clothes? I do. Who needs clothes? Do. Who needs clothes? We all, do. we all need clothes to make it. And we need a home. Who needs a home? I do. Who needs a home? Who needs a home? Ten, nine, eight, six, six, five, four, three. Two hands are better than one. Four hands are stronger than two. Working alone, I can't do as much as when I work with you. Working together, we can build a house. Working together, we can clean this room. Working together, we each take turns using the vacuum. Two hands are better than one. Four hands are stronger than two. Working alone, I can't do as much as when I work with you. Working together, we can plant a garden. Working together, we can make stuff quicker. Working together, we do our homework and earn more stickers. Two hands are better than one. Four hands are stronger than two. Working alone, I can't do as much as when I run. Everybody help us. Two hands are better than one. <laughs> what can we do to help stop bullying? What can we do to work things out? What can we do to help stop bullying? Let's talk about it here right now. Bullying hurts our feelings, embarrasses us, makes us cry. We don't want to hurt each other, so let us what can you do to help stop bullying? What can you do to work things out? What can you do to help stop bullying? Let's start the plan here right now. Tell a grown-up, talk about it, lend a hand to those in need. 
tell the boys they must stop find help and intercede. Big word, isn't it? Intercede. What can we do to help stop bullying? What can we do to work things out? What can we do to help stop bullying? Let's start here. Let's start now. Now, these are the different places we can help. Let's stop bullying in the mushroom bullying. John, that was fun. It's just fun to watch you entertain, and it's great to see the expressions on the children's faces. They are so engaged in this. Yeah, well, oftentimes when people come to film, videotape a performance, they aim the camera at me, and I tell them that, that that's not the, the right subject. If you really want to capture what's going on, you need to have the camera on the audience, so I'm glad you did that. Yeah. What kind of an influence is music, especially live music, for children? Well, it, it probably is as unifying a force as, as there is, because you notice that in this room full of uh, hundreds of children, or well over 100 children, they're all together, rhythmically, uh, singing words they've never heard before in a call and echo format. So for that period of time, everyone in the room is locked in to something that we're all doing at the same time. I think if you put an EKG on the kids' hearts, you'd find they were beaten in rhythm. Right. So, That's exciting. Yeah. You, I'm sure, could have made um, a lot following a different track of music, commercial music. Um, ha have you thought about that or have you thought about if you'd gone maybe the direction of James Taylor or mm -hmm. somebody like that? No, no, I haven't really. Uh, I, I love what I do. Um, I've had people ask me if I was interested in doing certain things that, that I was not interested in, mm. in doing. Uh, but uh, it is how I provide for my family, so I am c commercial in that sense. Too. Yes, yes, absolutely. It is a, it is a profession, without a mm -hmm. doubt. Do, are there musical influences that have been really strong for you? Uh, yeah, and you named one of them, mm -hmm. and, and James Taylor, his guitar style. Uh, Singer-songwriters, John Prine, uh, Jesse mm -hmm. Winchester, uh, John Gorka, Steve Earle is someone whose music I yes. really listen to and enjoy. That's great. Do, do you have an opportunity ever to perform with some of these people? I haven't. Uh, I haven't performed with with any of the ones that I just mentioned. I've met some of them and spent mm -hmm. some time with them, but not in a performance setting. No. Is every performance different? Uh, yes, absolutely, and that's something that I really enjoy. I, uh, you know, I go into a recording studio to make CDs, and it's part of the the work to try to get the best sound that you can, but I prefer performing with a live audience in a live performance setting. You deal with um, some, I guess, current topics like cell phones and other <laughs> things like that. Uh, that's, I think that's important. Share, yeah. share a little bit about that. Well, that song I was playing while I was warming up is about people uh, talking loudly on their cell phones <laughs> and, and uh, with disregard for other people's yeah. privacy. And um, I think music is a great way to uh, share your feelings about lots of different things. And it doesn't have to be um, aggressive or offensive to anyone, but it's a way you can look at a situation and kind of laugh about it. You want to share a little bit of that sure, one? Sure, I'll play kind of a little fun. bit of that. I enjoyed this, that this one. Is not, I didn't know you were listening. Well, I, you know, I'm probably one of those people that talk too loud on their cell phone. They say we're living in the information age. Facts and figures come and go at our command. The internet, satellite, cable, and the rest. But there's one thing that I just don't understand. Why is it that the cell phone makes us think that it's okay? to talk as though no one is there. Don't they know we're there? Do they really think we care about their dinner plans, their sales calls, and their hair? <laughs> we don't need to know Amanda C. and David. We don't need to know that Rudy will be late. We don't need to know who's going to the movies. We don't need to know about Marissa's weight. We don't need to know that Tom is a moron. We don't need to know who won the second game. We don't need to know about the plastic surgeon. We don't need to know the plastic surgeon's name. We don't need to know 
We don't need to know. We don't need to know. We don't want to know. We don't need to know. We don't need to know. We certainly don't need to know. I'll do the conclusion. Okay. Sometimes there's just too much information. And it's really inconsiderate to converse with someone who's not there. Noise pollution isn't fair. Public discourse just goes from bad to worse. So if you really have to talk, then please talk softly. Or better yet, find another place to go. You can gossip, laugh, and cry, talk until the battery dies. And best of all, the rest of us don't need to know. <laughs> I love that. That is great. Good advice for all of us, actually. That's great advice. I'm sure you've experienced that more than once. Well, and I've not only that, I've been the, the offender. So the uh, sequel to that is a song called It's Hard to Be a Hypocrite. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. John, people can learn about you online. Yes. Uh, you have a wonderful website. They can actually order your CDs and books. And, um, what's next for you? Well, I, I would like to mention that uh, Tennessee Tech has been a great supporter of the nonprofit work that I do and the Business Media Center has designed the Bridges of Peace and Hope website right. and uh, they maintain it and uh, I wrote, uh, I wrote this, the theme song for the Ollie the Otter campaign, the seatbelt yes. uh, and booster seat campaign. Yeah. Which is a wonderful, wonderful uh, work. Uh, the folks at the Business Media Center are just a delight to work with. And, uh, they 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 are. They're good friends of ours, too, yeah, and, and supporters been, of WCTE. We appreciate them. Yeah, they've been um, great. Uh, so we're looking to grow Bridges of Peace and Hope. The, uh, we're doing some uh, a clothing drive to help families that were displaced by the hurricane, um, working with, continue to work with the school in Zambia. Mm -hmm. I had a, a video clip yesterday from another school in Zambia of some children performing, and we're going to have them work with students here in the U.S. and create some sort of a collaborative video project that shows kids in both places. So. You're not you're not really big on screen time, right? You're not big on television. No. Um, and no. and share a little bit about that. It's an ironic thing that we're you know folks will be watching you <laughs> via television, but I think it's important to share. Well, when my uh, children were young, we didn't, uh, we didn't have television uh, in the house where we spent our summers, so they grew up in the summertime without TV, and we didn't have the television on at all during the week, and I went for several years without watching any television whatsoever, and now I've uh, come back to, to watching some. I think there's a lot of great stuff, like what we're doing. I think information about people and projects and things like that is wonderful. And I think there's a whole lot of uh, stuff that's useless and it just uh, clogs the brain. Well, one of the things that you advocate is um, turning off the TV or getting away from the screen and talking to your children and reading to your children. Mm -hmm. And I think that is really important. It is a message that we share with public television shares that same message. Um, how important is it for that parental engagement? Uh, you know, I don't think there's anything more important. Um, when I work with or people ask me about my work, and I say I, I work with the most important people in the world, um, children, teachers, and, and parents and families. So uh, the real seeds of change come from small places within families and within communities, and um, parental engagement is immensely important. You know, reading to your kid is the greatest predictor of academic success. When, when you, and, and you don't really have to be a great reader, do mm -hmm. you? You don't have to have a great voice. You just have to have that time. Take the time. And a lot of people didn't have that experience as children themselves. Mm -hmm. I'm fortunate in that I worked in educational publishing and worked with some great authors, and ch I got exposed to children's literature and children's music just at the time our family was, was starting. So uh, I could see other people modeling uh, how to engage with your kids. My parents were wonderful, but I'm the youngest of seven, and my mm -hmm. father worked two jobs, and the only reading we ever did was on Sunday mornings when he would read something from the newspaper, from the comics. Sure. And the only book that was in my house as a kid was uh, Horton Hatches an Egg, Dr. Seuss, which yeah. 
may be a big influence on my songwriting style, actually. Well, I love it, and and I'm so it's been such a joy to see you again and and spend this time together, and I, I hope we'll see you again soon. Well, thank you, Becky, and thanks for the work that you're doing. Thank you.